I love this roster. For the Rays, <laughs> who did they lose and who do they get? Shout out to Sam Miller. Second Sam reference. Second Sam reference. Right. King. This is uh, – uh, I, I look at the Tampa Bay roster and I like a lot of it. I do. I do. I do. Uh, I think the bullpen is deep as heck. And then I, I love watching Jason Adam in the WBC and it, like, poof, like this light bulb goes off. Like, wow, he's really good. <laughs> the Rays. It's like, they know what they're doing with pitching. Um, I could see them. They have a, a range like the Red Sox, but it's both higher. Mm-hmm. It, like the ceilings higher and the floor is higher as well. Yeah, I mean, I look when I look at this team, <clears throat> um, I, I I think they're going to make the playoffs. I think they will probably win somewhere more than eighty eight games. Uh, they could certainly win a hundred again, like they did a couple years ago. I think that what stops me with them is that their offense, while it will be most likely effective in the aggregate, I just do not see how they're going to score points against elite pitching they just simply do not have enough players who with contact skills that can you know just basically handle the best of the best and that might not show up until October but I just feel like there's just too much like there's too many guys batting 240 yeah right and getting on base enough and hitting for enough power that it's like you look at the aggregate and you're like, whoa, like 115 OPS plus, like good club. But I just don't know, like outside of, you know, really, I mean, I guess Randy Rose, Reina and Wander Franco, like who's the guy who's going to hit a, you know, a big home run off an elite reliever in the eighth inning of a postseason. I, I, I don't, I just don't know. Uh, I could be wrong, obviously, but that feels to me like a, f- a flaw within the club and one that is difficult to correct given uh, how they want to spend, um, although, you know, they, they weren't able to sign Freddie Freeman. They haven't been able to sign, like, DJ LeMahieu. They've made good faith offers, it seems like, for elite hitters. But, like, and they have all these good, effective players who catch the baseball, who fit into all the different things they want to do, but they just don't have, like, the superstar-type hitter who you can call upon in October, I feel like. I think when you're saying that they'll do a lot of things well and they'll get on base, I will – that's where I'm more concerned about is when you stop, when you start going after Rosarena and Brendan Lau, you start getting to mm. some maybe 310, <clears throat> oh, 300, 290 yeah. on base percentage. Jose Siri doesn't get on base. Kristen mm-hmm. Bethencourt doesn't get on base. Manuel Margot traditionally doesn't get on base. Um, I can see them having a base runner problem where they just don't have enough guys yeah. to knock in. Uh, they, they have some power up and down the lineup. Like, I really like a lot of these players. But I, I do wonder, but I also will expect them to just pull something out of their butt. You know what I mean? Like just all of a sudden, you know, it's not like we were talking about Harold Ramirez last year. They just pulled <laughs> Harold Ramirez out of their butt and the Rays are good at doing that. They're one of those teams that every year they'll they'll get a, a, a Judd Wichensen and all of a sudden you're like thinking, wow. I'm thinking about Judd Wishenson, not a real player, by the way. That's, that's maybe he is. I don't know. You'll see it. I mean, they got you know Garrett Clevenger and Pete Fairbanks and Jalen Beeks. I mean, they're you know they're in the name game. Yeah. Jalen Beeks, that's a great name game. But like, look, the, I think what's going to be really helpful for these guys is that there's fewer division games that they're going to have to worry about. They get to take their run prevention machine on the road and Mm. go ahead and choke out the Royals a couple of times and and, squelch the Colorado Rockies for like, I mean, I I think that's going to be a massive impact on these guys because the thing that they do well travels, they will prevent runs. All right. There's no question about it. So now that, that said, I think Andy's read on it is spot on because when you imagine the lineup that you're looking at with these guys in October, mm-hmm. right? And and even if they all maxed out and had like just about the 95th percentile outcome, right? Like it's still not enough to like give you confidence that that guy is going to hit a home run off of like some nasty fire breathing reliever in the eighth inning, right? And that's what it takes to win in the playoffs, period. Somebody has to do that for you. Now, where I'm curious is, I wonder if they're positioned enough 
or well enough to go out and get something that approximates that at the deadline, mm-hmm. right? And and I say approximates because they're not going to get the superstar, or whatever. But what we're really talking about is just somebody with like a power hitting pedigree that isn't going to shy from the moment. And as we get kind of closer to it, obviously the teams will declare themselves out of it. And maybe there's a pool of players that these guys can go pluck and infuse a little bit of that into their lineup. And I kind of wonder given how well they prevent runs and have done it historically, if even that would be enough to nudge right. them over. Right. Cause it, cause like, as I was listening to Andy, he's right. But I also think the gap isn't that wide, right. From like, Again, they're never going to have... We're not talking about the Padres, right? Where, like, the top four guys, like, scare the crap out of you. It's not going to be that. But you just need one or two that you can be like, yeah, I can see him popping a ball out there in that spot. And that's not that hard to get. It's not that hard. It's not that wide a gap to close. Given all the things they do well run prevention-wise and given the way that they have turned that into something of a perpetual motion machine where it just, like, it always seems to work, I did feel like they should have been more aggressive last summer for Juan Soto. Um, Even if they would have had to maybe try and flip him again this summer if if it wasn't working, but I just felt like that made sense so much for their roster. Um, But, you know, they, like, majority of the sport looked at the prices and were like that's crazy um <laughs> and so like that's you know can't fault them for that because i think that might have been the uh the rational course of action but um i just i feel like that you know it's it's a i know it's like a it's a you know it's pretty easy just get juan soto like that's all you're you're a juan soto away but um yeah i i i think that when you just look at it there's just clearly a lack of a star hitter but maybe wander franco becomes that maybe randy rosarena you know like really puts it together who can say yeah i just will say that i've heard a lot of phrases that i like in discussion with the rays uh, run prevention machine and choking other teams out like that's that's going to be their plan they are just gonna it's like the guardians last year um you know maybe not as much of room room on the bases mm. but cats the ball pitch the ball miss bats uh, hope for something good to happen. And I think that's going to be pretty, pretty darn good, at least in the regular season. The oh, postseason, yeah. yeah, you make They're, they're going to just beat up a bunch of crappy teams by keeping them to two hits and one run every night. Right. Right. They're going to go into <laughs> Oakland, sweep the series, and Oakland maybe make contact twice. Like that kind of thing. I mean, you know, it's going to be like, look at the, the bottom part of the league. And the way the Rays are built, oh my goodness, it's just like feeding like wood into a chipper, right? <laughs> like that's what it's going to be. Yeah, so yeah. I think that helps like give them some buffer, um, you know, and they're not having to do that with like, you know, Toronto as often or, or New York as often, which, you know, like that's, as we know, the way the game is played that that takes a chunk out of you when you go through those places. All right. Like the, those bullpens, like their bullpen, right. And this is something with the Rays that just amazes me. Like they're giving it all they got to try to hold those offenses down. There's going to be, a, there's a price to pay when you're coming out of New York and coming out of Toronto. Mm-hmm. Well, they're not paying that much of a, as much that toll this year. And I think that's going to help them out big time. 